Hello, Kerry here. I've been dying to do an abstract painting for ages. I seem to be doing a lot of other things just lately. So, I've decided to set one up. I've just taken a page out of my little journal, my 10x10 10 10 journal. Oh my goodness, the camera's gone bonkers. Does not like that, does it? Oh my God, that's awful. Sorry about that. Ugh, I think I might cut that out. It's the muslin. I think it's the muslin. Anyway, uh, so I'm sticking down some muslin <laughs> onto this paper because I want some texture. I like the texture it gives. And I'm not going to gesso it, so the paint will absorb into it. So I'm just uh, popping it down with some PVA glue and I'm flattening it down now. I'm not going to carry on. I'm not going to wait for it to dry. I'm just going to get cracking because PVA glue and acrylic, acrylic is the same stuff anyway. So it all blends in and works well. Just covering up these edges where I've missed little bits off there. I'm using a silicone brush to do that because it's dead easy to clean. I just soak it in a bit of water and it peels off. Bliss! So much better than cleaning brushes. Just trimming off the overhanging bits. Just to tidy it up a bit. Right, uh, just trim this bit off the deckled edge. I love that deckled edge. I've got that on all my pages in this book. Because it's watercolour paper, it's very heavy watercolour paper nice and thick and I'm gathering all my tools together um, <laughs> usual paints my acrylic paints system 3 acrylics I'm using a Conte pencil to make some marks The little alarm went off on my phone there. <laughs> I was going to watch something on eBay and I forgot about it. And I'm just putting down some darker colours to start with. As you can see, the paint is having a hard job getting into the muslin. But that's okay because um, I can use that to its advantage later on when I want to pick up texture. And I'm going in with some lighter colour. It's mostly white with just a touch of light blue. And I'm slightly smushing the colours together because I like those intermediate um, tones I get. I just love those colours. Getting a lov lovely shades of grey. Beautiful. And they're going in with some slightly darker blue. I've had to speed this up because I spent quite a lot of time on this one. And as it is sped up, it's uh, 22 minutes long. I'm really sorry about that. I didn't want to speed it up any further. You can go even faster, but I think this is fast enough so that you can get an idea of what I'm doing. And now I'm mixing some buff colour and that's using raw sienna with white. At the moment my idea is just to cover the um, cover the paper with paint and then I can I've got something some foundation to work on. And again I'm working intuitively. I've gone back in with the Conte. And it's blending in nicely with the paint actually it's better than charcoal for that it's the oils in the paint i think in the pencil i think and now i'm going in with this uh, roller i just got bought recently it's a children's roller and i'm using it to make some marks so i'm just going to smush some red on i've never used this before so this was just experimental and i quite like that actually <laughs> it's like tire marks it's like i've driven over it with a car and now i'm going in with some more red into the darker areas. And working back in with the light blue. Smushing the colours together again there.
continue to work around the painting with the different colours. And now I'm going in with a fine liner with the Payne's Grey. Struggled a bit to get this lid back on. <laughs> Making some marks with the paintbrush. They may or may not appear in the final piece, but I enjoy making them. I quite like working, like working when there's borders of colours. I quite like making marks in between those two borders. It breaks them up a bit. I'm doing that here now, making squares. Again, I'm not sure if these will stay in at the end. But that doesn't matter. It's about the process. And I'm making some long marks, but these don't work out very well at all. I end up going over those. So now I've got a piece of paper with, I have some holes punched in it. And I'm just dabbing some paint through to make some other marks. Some of them are clear and some of them are a bit uh, subtle. For some reason I wanted to emphasise those shapes but I think I lose those in the end. <laughs> I'm just going in with some of the lighter blue. I want to bring up some more of a lighter tone in there. And although this brush is lovely, it's not really ideal for this job. I need to put it away and get my other brushes out. <laughs> it's actually a lifting brush for watercolours, really. <laughs> it's lovely for that job. I quite like it for all sorts of jobs, actually. Anyway, back to the normal brushes. <laughs> These are just um, either hog, oil painting hogs or acrylic synthetics that I use. I've had for a long time. Every now and then I have to take the hair dryer out and give it a blast. Especially if I want to go with dry media. going on with this colour but I'm not sure whether it's too bright a colour I might have to tone it down a bit
going back in with some light blue now I'm a bit troubled by that red shape I think it looks a bit like a dog <laughs> and so I'm trying to alter its silhouette slightly but even at the end of this session I'm not entirely happy with its shape so when I next come into this I um, you'll see what I do <laughs> So funny when you get funny shapes appearing, isn't it? Getting some darker colour there now. I think I added burnt sienna to that red and that made the darker colour. It's quite a nice rich colour. And now I'm going in with some more light colours, trying to alter that shape again. blend those colours together. There's little spots of that lovely bright colour there. I do like that colour. That is the, what is it now? That's the crimson. No, the scarlet mixed with white. It's a lovely colour. Right, this is the next day. <laughs> so um, I'm just going in there and knocking back that shape, which has been bothering me. And I've also done some dribbles on the right hand side. I did that after I turned off the camera. I just couldn't stop working. You know how it is. <laughs> so I've just rolled it in some white and now I'm going in with some light blue. I'm totally altering that shape. It's funny, I have to leave it at overnight before I can do, see what needs to be done. I had a vague idea when I was working on it, I was troubled, but it's not until I look at it with fresh eyes the next day that I can really see what needs to be done. And already that shape is looking a lot better and it's less like an animal, or is it? <laughs> it's funny how people see things in things. That's the good thing about abstract art is that actually the viewer, see, you know, each individual viewer can see something different. So I'm still working intuitively actually. I've not got to the thinking stage yet. That happens right at the very end, really, when I want to tie it all up. Going in with the Conte crayon again. I 
I hold the pencil very loosely at the very end to stop any stop me being too controlling with it. Quite like in that area we can still see the texture of the um, muslin I put down at the very beginning. I find if I use the brush lightly and brush over it gently you can, it, it uh, highlights the uh, higher areas, the relief areas. I'm beginning to feel this is taking shape now. Going in with some white lines. I have to try those off before I work any further into the painting because because they're slightly runnier than uh, the normal acrylic. They they won't they take longer to dry. I'm having a look at it there, straight on. And now I'm going to make some marks with this very expensive tool. You can't really see them very well, but they're there. And I've got to stamp some text in the top right hand corner. There. <laughs> Close up of those. It's hard to see from this distance really, isn't it? And I'm going to knock some of it back again. I don't want it to be too distinct. That's better. I think I'm more at the thinking stage now. I'm working less intuitively. Now going in with another expensive tool. <laughs> it's the bobbin from the sewing. I'm just going to make some marks with it. Very nearly finished now, so I'm really debating what to do next. I know, I know I want to go to my text stencil, which I'm a bit worried I overdo slightly. But it really does seem to finish off a painting for me. I 
So I'm mixing up some of the um, the buff colour slightly darker than I have been using, so it will show up against the lighter areas, but subtly. I don't want it to be too loud. There, that's it. And I made a bit of a mess there, so I've got to tidy that up. Got to go over it a bit with paint as well. That's better. <laughs> Blending with my finger. And here we are. I'm afraid um, after I finished recording, I went over again and I've added some more white lines. For some reason, I didn't catch this on film. But I'll put a picture up at the very end of what it looks like with the extra white lines on. I knew it needed something else and that did finish it off. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. I'd like your opinion. <laughs> Bye.